were found in Zimbabwe. These fossils were found in South Africa. These fossils were found in Lesotho. And so, we leave the world of fossils behind us and return to the bus. Back to you, Frizz. Welcome back to the Back Bus Dinatorium. out everyone's reports about the age of dinosaurs. Fossils are what is left behind when a plant or animal has been buried a long time. So long that its bones and sometimes even its skin, footprints, poop, and eggs have turned to stone. Fossils are rare. Usually, an animal's bones are scattered. Fossils are rare. Usually, an animal's bones are scattered by other animals before they can be covered. Some bones that are fossilized are buried where we'll never find them. This makes every fossil we find very important. To become a fossil, a dead plant or animal has to be covered by dirt or sand. Swamps, rivers, and sand dunes are very good for this. Over millions of years, minerals in the rock soak into the bones, turning them into fossils. Not everything that lived a long time ago. Sometimes paleontologists know where to find fossils, but sometimes they're just lucky. One thing's for sure, you can't find old bones if you have lazy bones. Paleontologists are scientists who study fossils to learn about the plants and animals that lived long ago. Their job is to find fossils, recover them, and then figure out what they mean. Fossils are very fragile, so paleontologists dig around them carefully. They wrap the bones in casts before they take them to the lab and clean them gently. Digging up a whole skeleton this way can take several years. Fossil bones and teeth can tell paleontologists a lot about how a dinosaur looked when it was alive, how it grew and moved, what kind of food it ate, and maybe even how it died. The oldest known dinosaur, an Eoraptor from 228 million years ago, was found near San Juan, Argentina. The tiniest complete fossil, a just-hatched Musaurus, was also found here. Dinosaur fossils have been found on every continent. Some of the most important finds were made in Tanzania, Germany, Mongolia, Argentina, and the USA. But there are still lots of fossils left to find, and you might be the one to find them. Fossilized oviraptor eggs and nests were first discovered near the flaming cliffs of the Gobi Desert in Mongolia, and recently, paleontologists found a fossil of an adult oviraptor sitting on a nest of eggs. Brachiosaurus, the heaviest dinosaur ever dug up, was first found in Tendaguru, Tanzania. Because the fossils here and in the western USA were so alike, paleontologists figured out that North America and Africa were once connected. Many famous fossils were found in western USA, including Triceratops, Tyrannosaurus, Diplodocus, Deinonychus, and Myasaura. Archaeopteryx, the first bird, was found in a rock quarry in Bavaria. The fossil looked a lot like a dinosaur, but had the imprints of feathers around it. This fossil was the first clue that birds evolved from dinosaurs. Each of the continents has been moving very slowly ever since the Earth was formed. As they move, they change the shape of the oceans, create mountains, and trigger earthquakes and volcanoes. The Earth is a very different place now than when the dinosaurs were alive. The oceans and the continents have changed places, and even the weather is different. The world will continue to change under our feet, but so slowly we can barely notice it. As the continents move together, a species of animal can move around the world. A 
As the continents move apart, animals evolve in isolation. This is why Australia has so many unusual animals. It has been separate from the rest of the world for millions of years. Diplodocus, at 90 feet long, used to be the longest dinosaur we knew of. Brachiosaurus, at around 55 tons, used to be the heaviest known dinosaur. But now, paleontologists have discovered Argentinosaurus. It was 115 feet long and maybe weighed 100 tons. These huge herbivores were the largest land animals that ever lived. Sauropods lived everywhere in the world and existed from the early Jurassic to the end of the Cretaceous. Sauropods probably had to eat constantly. They stripped leaves from branches and swallowed them without chewing. The unchewed leaves were ground up by rocks in their stomachs. Plesiosaurs had long necks, narrow bodies, and legs shaped like flippers. Like penguins today, they used their flippers to fly through the water and hunt fish. No dinosaurs lived in the oceans, but some very large reptiles did. These reptiles were as important to the sea as dinosaurs were to the land. The two main types of marine reptiles were ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs. Short-necked plesiosaurs like this chronosaurus had short, stout necks and large skulls. From their fossils, paleontologists think that they were powerful hunters who could swim for long distances. Look at those teeth! Ichthyosaur means fish lizard. These carnivores were reptiles, but they were completely adapted to life in the water. Like dolphins today, they swam like fish, gave birth to live young, and breathed air. Archaeopteryx probably evolved from a fast little carnivore, like Compsognathus. Having feathered arms might have helped to trap insects and other small creatures. Flying may have just been a lucky accident that came from having feathers. Scientists used to wonder how birds evolved, until they discovered fossils of Archaeopteryx. Archaeopteryx was a dinosaur, with teeth and a tail, but it also had wings and feathers, like a bird. You might think those reptiles flying overhead are dinosaurs, but they're actually pterosaurs. Some pterosaurs live near oceans, some live near lakes, and a lot of them ate fish. And even though they had wings and flew, they did not evolve into birds. Ramphorhynchids lived in the Jurassic period. They had long tails that helped them steer. Studies of their skulls show that they probably had excellent eyesight, but a poor sense of smell, just like birds. Pterodactyls lived in the Jurassic and Cretaceous. They had short tails and long necks. Pterodactylus was the smallest. Its wings were less than three feet across. Quetzalcoatlus was the largest, with wings almost 35 feet across. Most dinosaurs were much larger than the largest reptiles alive today. But they weren't the only examples of gigantism. The Mesozoic era also had 50-foot-long sharks and 40-foot-long alligators. A species doesn't get gigantic overnight. It has to live in an ecosystem that has room for a creature that big, enough to eat, and not too many predators. Even then, it may be millions of years before the species develops. In prehistoric times, some species grew to be very large, much larger than the same types of animals are now. This is called gigantism. Even though some dinosaurs did get to be huge, most dinosaurs were not very gigantic. Some were only people-sized, like Rio Arebosaurus, and some were even as tiny as a cat, like Lesuthosaurus. Welcome back to the... A dash to the dash, is it? See you later! Thank you for flying Fizzle Air. And we hope you enjoy your stay 70 million years ago in Cretaceous, Alberta. Watch the predators, please, and have a highlight in the Triassic period. I do hope that our time machine pulls us through. Here
Here comes Triassic Argentina, 220 million years before the present. Enjoyed your trip through time with Captain Frizz? We have just arrived in Triassic, Argentina, and I invite you to check out the wide variety of ruling reptiles during your stay. This turtle looks just like the one at the zoo. Ah, a familiar face in Triassic, Argentina. Liz, you're not on that Ebosaurus menu. They only eat plants. Go, speed reptile. Try to solve the skeleton puzzle and see if you can spot the Herrerasaurus. Sometimes paleontologists dig up scattered piles of bones. Then they try to put them together in the right way. Try your hand at putting this skeleton back together. Ooh, that Platyosaur skeleton is in a big jumble. Let's see if we can sort it out. Imagine how this dinosaur looks and moved. Bones on the wall. Wow, you put Platyosaurus back together just right. Platyosaurus was a protosauropod who lived 208 million years ago. Protosauropods were the ancestors of giant sauropods, like Diplodocus. Paleocard, paleocard, who gets the paleocard? You do thanks to your puzzle-solving powers. Clicking the paleocard button will show you all the cards you've won. Here comes Next time, that puzzle doesn't stand a chance. Go, 
speed reptile! The oldest dinosaur fossils that anyone found so far were right here, in Argentina. That means the 220 million year old dinos we're looking at could be the grandparents of all dinosaurs. Aren't these rinkosaurs magnificent, class? They were very common reptiles here in the Triassic period. Shh! Wow! The Triassic period had more rinkosaurs than the Frizz has outfits. Yikes! 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 Eoraptor is the oldest known dinosaur. And get this, he's only as big as my dog. But I bet you wouldn't pet him. That's it! That's the creature we're looking for! Now let's put that picture in the album right away. Hip hip hooray for Herrerasaurus! And hooray to you for catching the King Carnivore of Triassic Argentina! What now? Turn the page to see our next missing animal. Ooh, so you're ready to find the next missing critter? Just click on the red crystal to hear some clues. This dinosaur was known for having a rather large brain. The la This carnivore was a small, swift hunter, about seven feet long, with long legs and large eyes. You might just find one darting across a field in Cretaceous, Alberta. See you soon! We still have more dinos to find! Woohoo! Let's get on the bus and hightail it to Arizona! There are fossils in the making down here. According to my research, phytosaurs and crocodiles are related. They sure do look alike. Find out what you know about dinosaur sizes. And check out Rio Arribasaurus while you're there. Bigger than a bread box? Smaller than an elephant? Dinos came in all shapes and sizes. Your job here is to match the size of these dinosaurs to some everyday objects. Can you tell me which one of these dinosaurs was as tall as a five-story building? Actually, Albertosaurus was not as tall as a five-story building which is probably for the best. 